Worse than Afghanistan. I wonder what Afghanistan was like before Joe Biden's surrender to the Taliban. I'm sure it wasn't perfect. I'm sure there were a lot of problems. There's a lot of news that we would cover frequently. But I wonder, was it better than San Francisco is now? I'd have to imagine, yes, because of what this guy's saying. But I mean, maybe an extreme exaggeration. To be completely honest, from the post-millennial, San Francisco is worse than Afghanistan. Immigrant store owner begs city for help amid theft epidemic. At least in Afghanistan, the Taliban will cut your hand off and people are afraid to commit such a crime. The guy's store was ransacked. Ain't nobody going to come help you, dude. These are Democrat run cities. And I got to be honest, the people of these cities vote for this. What more do you expect? But the post-millennial has another story. Portland bleeds population amid massive crime surge. Quote, it's like Portland died. Yeah. What do you expect? What, what do you what do you what do you think is going to happen? You know, I saw uh, uh, Tim Scott was on The View and he got booed for praising Ron DeSantis. And I just think I don't understand how you can just have all of this destruction. And then cheer for it. Now, some people are just evil. And I think the reality is for people who watch The View, Tim Scott was on The View. They don't know because The View keeps him in the dark. They don't let you hear these things. They don't say these things. They lie. They cheat. They steal. They want you stupid so that you keep voting for this. Probably one of my uh, favorite videos of this past week, excuse me, is um, it's it's a community in Chicago booing and screaming at their local politicians who say they're going to be bringing in hundreds of migrants to sleep in their neighborhoods. And they're like, what? And I'm just, you know, I, it, I'm, I'm happy to see it because it means people are going to wake up. You can't wake people up by just telling them because people, well, they're arrogant and they're, they don't trust you. And so you go to one of these people in San Francisco or Portland or Chicago and you say, listen, if you vote for this bad thing will happen. And they go, oh, you're far right. You're a fascist, blah, blah, blah. And then it happens to them. OK, well, baby needed to get burned before baby would learn fire. Indeed, hot. And now they're learning. They're saying, hey, wait a minute. You're destroying everything. Duh. Well, we told you it was going to happen. That's the challenge in, in politics. People don't believe you. No, for real. They don't they don't believe you. So what do you do? Here's the story from the post millennial. San Francisco is worse than Afghanistan. A San Francisco store owner who immigrated to the United States from Afghanistan recently claimed that crime in the city is worse than in Afghanistan after violent criminals robbed his tobacco shop, stealing more than $100,000 in merchandise. Mind you, I'm willing to bet that that was all bought on a loan. You take out a loan, you buy the product, you sell the product, you pay the loan back with interest. Zaid, co-owner of Cigarettes Are Cheaper, says that a gang of thieves robbed his store on Tuesday night and stole $80,000 worth of merchandise, along with $20,000 in cash. Jeez, man. The politicians need to get a grip on this because it's worse than Afghanistan or Iraq, he told the outlet. At least in Afghanistan, the Taliban will cut your hand off and people are afraid to commit such a crime. The Afghan immigrant slammed the San Francisco's progressive, slammed San Francisco's, San Francisco's progressive policies that prevent criminals from being held accountable. They know the police won't do anything, Zaid explained, revealing that the robbers were inside his store for 20 minutes before police were able to respond. Why would they? Why would they show up? Police told Zaid that the long response time was due to the department's staffing crisis, the outlet reports. We have drugs issue. We have homeless issue. And on top of the, this, these idiots come in here and take whatever they want. Zaid, who opened his store in 2003 after coming, uh, immigrating uh, from, from the, uh, to the U.S. from Afghanistan in 1987. SFPD told Fox News that officers arrived in the scene at 2.44 a.m. and observed the window to the business shattered and items from the business strewn about the scene. According to Zaid, the city is seeing a mass exodus of both people and businesses due to its increased criminal nature. Zaid said he might soon be the next owner to close up shop. The city has gone downhill, especially the last two years since covid I have never seen it worse. People are afraid to come shopping here because they're either going to get robbed or someone will break into their car. Yep. Yo, you go to SF. They're going to smash the back window of your car and they're going to steal your luggage. It's what they do. They do it all the time. It happened to CNN crew. 
We might have to shut it down, he said. Our safety is more important than making a living in this city. And, and they just had that uh, that commercial where it's like, come to San Francisco. Oh, please don't. Zaid closing down his tobacco shop would add to the growing list of businesses in SF that have decided to permanently shutter their doors due to the city's vast increase in crime, rampant retail theft, open air drug use, violent attacks carried out by homeless vagrants and loss of foot traffic. In recent months, Nordstrom, Whole Foods, T-Mobile, Walgreens, Saks, and Old Navy have all announced their departures from the once beloved city. And you know what else? Same thing's happening in Portland. Same thing. Now, you can't come to me and say, oh, it's a coincidence. Because when we come out, we say, hey, you realize Democrat policies are doing this. The Democrats come back and say, there's high crime in West Virginia, too. Bro, I don't know there's nothing in West Virginia. I got to be completely honest. Now, in major urban areas, it's bad. But here's the thing. If they're going per capita and you have, I don't know, 30,000 people who live. What is Charlestown in West Virginia? Like 30,000 people. Maybe in the metro, it's 100. And so you might have a higher percentage rate per capita. But there's substantially more crime. So it's like, oh, you know, X percent in West Virginia, it's so high. And it's like, yeah, but there's only 30,000 people. So that really means that there were seven robberies, seven robberies. And then you go to D.C. and it's like well, the percentage of crime is actually much lower. Yeah, but it's 100,000 robberies. Come on. What are you talking about? We're talking about a metro with like 20 something million people in it. I don't know how you how you calculate the metro of D.C., Baltimore. And uh, well, I guess it's mostly just D.C., the D.C., D.C., Baltimore area. And then you have the surrounding suburbs. But 10, 20 million is a bit extensive. All right. A little exaggerated there. But several million people. New York City's what, 13 million in the metro? And they're like, the crime rate is lower. Yeah, but there's still substantially more crime. That's the issue. You can make an argument about the likelihood of being, of being a victim of crime. I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, we're all armed in West Virginia, so we're doing pretty good. And I haven't noticed anything. And for the most part, no one's around you. You're walking around. You're by yourself. Now, granted, fair point. Harder to call the cops in West Virginia because you're in the middle of nowhere. But it's not like they're responding anyway. <clears throat> Take a look at this story. Portland. Surprise, surprise. Portland, Oregon has suffered massive population loss since 2020. According to census data, the city lost the sixth most number of people of any city in the, in the U.S. last year, losing 8,308 people from July 2021 to July 2022. The decline comes after the city saw 15 straight years of growth before the COVID-19 pandemic and amid a massive crime wave since the city became the epicenter of the 2020 Black Lives Matter riots. A Portland resident of 15 years told local news station KPTV, I know it's been really tough for a lot of people through the pandemic. It's been hard to see Portland at the forefront of some of those tensions. It's like Portland died. Another resident, Larry May, said the tourists haven't come back like they used to be, especially the Japanese. They love this city. The crime is really bad. Shootings. It's not the Portland I knew. A state of the economy report by Portland Business Alliance stated if trends continue, the economic outlook, especially for the city of Portland, is as concerning as any time since the twin recessions of the 1980s. It continued. Newly released census data suggests the region can no longer take net in migration for granted, as it has for most of its history. People and businesses vote with their feet, and they are not voting for Portland, the city or the region in the way they have in recent past. I wonder why. Good. Good, good, good. I am glad to see it. When we were watching those riots and the fire bombings of buildings, we said, why won't anyone do anything? A roving band of psychotic death cultist leftists went to some guy's house with an American flag and threatened him with death unless he unless he took it down. And we say, why won't they do anything? Well, you know what people are? They're leaving. Good, good. These cities are dried, wither, withered husks of what what they once were. And they're only it's only getting worse. Now, I do think it's fair to point out if people of good people of merit and people of good conscience leave, then the cities will just decay further. It's a cascade effect, much like with the Bud Light effect. Conservatives leave. They become more liberal leftist. They vote for more policies that destroy everything. Maybe that's what's that, that's is what needs to happen. The stock of these companies need to collapse. The cities need to collapse so we can start over. There's no question. 
Democrat policies make these cities crumble and decay. There's no question. And now we're watching it happen. We don't need news news stories to come out every 20 minutes to prove it to us. We knew it was going to happen, but now we at least have the evidence. So show your friends and family when they don't believe you and say, what will it take for you to listen when I say this is going to be bad? Show them these stories. Really? People are leaving? I can't. I don't notice anything. Well, you will one day. You will when your costs go up, when the crime goes up, when the police leave, and then you're left holding an empty bag. Your home will be worth nothing. You won't be able to sell it. You'll have no equity and you'll say, gee, what did I do wrong? You held on to a bad investment. These cities, ain't it? I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.